This episode of the Outline Podcast is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering the listeners of this show one free audiobook and a 30-day free trial. To redeem this, you can click the link in the show notes or visit www.audibletrial.com forward slash outline pod. Let's start the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Outline with Kevin Dwayne. Dwayne. Kevin Dwayne. Yo, what's going on? This is the Outline Podcast, your discussion of all things LGBT culture, entertainment, and a piece of encouragement for everyone. This is not a drill. Yes, it is me after a few months of adjusting to my new life. When I last did the show, I was going into training to be a flight attendant. Well, I've done that. I have partially moved to New York and I am in a place where I feel like I can create content again. Now, I don't know how consistent it will be because my schedule is still the craziest thing I've ever had to experience in my life. It's all over the place. One minute I'm here, the next minute I'm somewhere else. And in between that, I am sleeping or just having a plain good old time. But I missed you all and I've gotten several messages from you as well saying that you missed me. So I definitely wanted to get back to the show. But I don't know if it's going to be weekly. I don't know if it's going to be monthly, bi-monthly. I don't know, but I'm going to try my best to give you content on the go. Because I am based in New York and not Atlanta, I don't have the same studio setup. So me being agile, have decided to record on my phone and just edit it that way. So some insight. So currently, which makes this podcast a little more fun now, in my opinion, because I get to take you with me. Currently, I am in Vancouver, Canada. It's my first time here um, having a relaxing day. I had a red eye on the way here. Well, it wasn't supposed to be a red eye. It was supposed to be a regular trip, but it got delayed. Then it became a red eye. I'm here for the entire day. And then tonight I'm going to actually go on a red eye back to New York. So I'm chilling. I had a great morning. I went to this place called Breaking Bean. If you're ever in Vancouver, go to Breaking Bean. It's a play on the show Breaking Bad. It's a little cafe super cute the food was good but the shining star of that spot was the caramel macchiato if you follow me on instagram check out my story i highlight every city that i go to or that i stay in because i hit a lot of cities but sometimes i don't stay if i stay i tend to take pictures or do something if the city is kind of worth capturing because there's some places you go like El Paso, Texas, where there's no point in posting anything because there's nothing there except heat and felonies. But places like this, there's cool stuff to show. So check out my feed. I highlight the story. So even after they go away, you can still look at them on my page, The World of Kevin. Check that out. But the place is called Breaking Bean. They had the best caramel macchiato I have ever had Serious, bar none, bar none. It was so good. Didn't have to add anything to it. It had the perfect amount of sweetness and coffee and caramel. It was just delicious. The omelet was good. I got a veggie omelet with a side of toast. It was a very simple, simple meal and I really enjoyed it. Canada is cool. I was able to rent a bike from the hotel I'm staying in for free for two hours. So I rode it along the Bay Shore. It's moments like these 
days where I realize I made the right decision to become a flight attendant is when I get to stay in nice hotels and I get to explore a beautiful city that I wouldn't otherwise go to on my own. Now, I'm not saying I would never come to Vancouver on my own, but I think I would have picked maybe Toronto or somewhere else before I would have chosen Vancouver. But now that I'm here, I'm like, oh, this is very beautiful. It's a very clean spot. It's just, it's really, really cool. It's really cool. Um, But I will say it's ultra, ultra, ultra white and Asian. Like, I am literally one of maybe four niggas here. Kid, you not. And another one came with me here on the trip. So there's that, all right? So... Not much going on on like the dating front or the, you know, grinder jack front. It's kind of like, okay, this is obviously a resting period, you know, put it on ice because nothing's happening here, but it's a beautiful town. So I rode my bike along the Bay Shore, just beautiful, like just ocean, like not ocean front, but just bodies of water, lakes and rivers and things that you can see in this area. And it's just absolutely gorgeous it was peaceful i haven't ridden a bike in so long it felt good it's just it was a little bit of exercise it's just it's a good time so i came back to my room and i'm chilling for a little bit um trying to just relax since i have the red eye tonight and i have to stay up we can't go you know we can't fall asleep that's like ooh, that's a big no you can lose your job so i'm trying to kind of rest today i'm gonna go out to the spot later and get some ramen because I love ramen. I'm gonna get some ramen later, hopefully eat, maybe, um, I don't know if I have enough time to have a cocktail because we, we, can, we can't drink within a certain amount of time. So we probably gonna skip the cocktail, but I'm gonna have some ramen and then come back and hopefully get like a good nap in, like a good two hour nap. That would be just lit, just enough to get me through the night because I have to get through this flight back to New York. But, Life has been good, y'all. Life has been so good. Training was crazy as fuck. That's all I'm going to say. And that's just that. Training was crazy. I was questioning everything in training. I was like, "Am I? did I make the right decision? Should I do this? What's going on? It was, it was just, it was a lot. It was intense. But I get it in the grand scheme of things because this is really a great job. And it's one of those things that it's just kind of like a rite of passage. You have to just get through it to get to this part of it. But I've been having a good ass time. Now, granted, being a flight attendant is not like, you know, just super, super glamorous, but guess what? It can be. I've seen a lot of people like on YouTube and people who talk about the job, talk about the negative aspects of it. It's like, oh, it's not all glamour. No, it's not all glamour. There are some downfalls like being fucking rerouted. Oh my God. I was on my way. I, ha- I thought I had a trip to DC. I was, I was so excited. I thought I was going to see my friends in DC. Got to the plane, got that message. They were like, you've been rerouted. It. Now you're going to fucking El Paso, Texas. I was over that shit. Stuff like that sucks because you have to be agile. You have to be ready to just go to different places and you just got to go with it. You, all you have is a packed bag and you go wherever they want you to go. Or even when you're working, like I've been working somewhere like Salt Lake City or something. And I'll have like, I thought I had like a 24 hour layover. And then right before we land, I get a message that actually you're going to work these two more flights. And then you're going to come back here for a layover of 13 hours, like stuff like that. That shit sucks. Also, you know, when you're dealing with the general public passengers and stuff, you're going to get a little, you know, you get people from all walks of life and you got to be able to deal with that. But in the grand scheme of things, I'm okay with everything because I get moments like these where I'm in Canada or over the weekend for 4th of July, I was on reserve and I was sent to Madrid, Spain. And it was Pride weekend. Like, I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, it was just the most crazy. It's it's just a crazy lifestyle. It was so crazy just to be in so many different places. And it's just back to back to back to back to back. And it's been fun. I literally, literally have been living my best life. For real. It has been such a journey. Uh, Being in New York on my off days is great. Just learning the city. I feel like I've conquered public transportation. I've figured out my ebb and flow. Just 
this was a change that I needed. I was getting very complacent with life when I was at my last job. I mean, I enjoyed the people I worked with. I enjoyed the role for as long as I could, but at a certain point I wanted more. I wanted to travel. I wanted to see the world. And I asked for this. I asked for this moment here. And so to be sitting here just means a lot because it's just, it's just different. You don't take the work home in this job. Like you fly with people and everything resets. You don't work with the same crews. You don't see the same passengers. You legit, everything resets every time. And it's just, it's hard to explain. You just have to be in it. And then to go to these different cities. And then also, I mean, let's not leave out the niggas. Oh my God. Like I see thousands of people every day. <laughs> Literally, like every time I step on a flight, that's easily what? two, three hundred people, depending on the size of the plane, it could be even more. But then if I do two flights in that day, double that. Then I'm in the airport. Like, you're always seeing beautiful people from all walks of life. I've, I've seen so much culture and so much variety in the last three months than I've had in the last seven years when I was in Atlanta, because Atlanta is very black and white. Now there's other people there, but it's still very much black and white. New York is a melting pot, a lot like California. But then when you're in an airport, you're literally connecting everyone in the world. And I've just seen some gorgeous, gorgeous people. Oh my goodness. I've also smashed some gorgeous people. <sighs> I'm not gonna tell all my business, but it's it's been it's been a fun time. It's been a very good time, you know, and I'm just, you know. It's, it's been fun. I'm like, is this what rappers and celebrities feel like? Because also with this life, you're always the new person in town because you're just hitting these cities for a day and then you're out and who knows when you'll be back. And so it's, it's quite interesting. Now there's a downside to that because, you know, you have to really cultivate and figure out a way to maintain and sustain relationships. You know, you got to find a way to stay connected to people because you're in and out so quickly. But on the flip side, it's super fun because you just get down to what you need to get down to. You don't waste no time and you just you just go from there, you know, and it, it just is what it is. But it's super fun. Um, I'm learning that you can do so much with just a few hours in the city. You know, and then sometimes you get to places and you just want to chill. There's been times where I just come in and slam click and I just stay in my room and just chill or I'll go to the gym. Or I'll just get some, I'll order some Uber Eats to the room and I'll chill. And then there's other times where I go out and just do what I can in that time because it's just, these are fleeting opportunities. It's just, it's awesome. It's awesome. Life is awesome. If I appear happy, I am happy. It's great. I've gotten used to it because at first I was just tired all the time. I was, you know, when you, when you, anyone who works in airlines tell you that things work based off of your seniority. So when you're new, you kind of get abused. Like you get the leftover schedule, you get like early ass trips and long days and it's just, it's not the best. But what I like about my company is we have a little more flexibility with how we are able to swap into trips and stuff like that. So I've been able to figure that shit out for myself. I've been very strategic with my schedule. So now I'm flying really good trips and I know how to kind of play it so I can kind of do what I want. Now, granted, I can still get terrible trips. Like if, you know, if it comes down to it or if something happens, but Ultimately, I'm flying what I want to fly already because I've learned how to kind of manipulate it in a way that works for me until I'm able to do other things as time goes on. But yeah, no, having a great time, but I did miss you guys. I absolutely miss you guys. I want to come back and just have a regular show. But as I said before, I just don't know how regular, how consistent, but just know that the show is back in its own way. And I am here 
And I can't wait to share more journeys with you all. I hope to add more aspects, maybe a little video aspect on YouTube or Instagram story, something just to kind of bring you guys in because I'm always on the go. So I want you guys to be able to see where I am. So make sure you're following me on the world of Kevin so you can see all of these things. And yeah, it's going to be a great time. Now, I know it's a, pod a podcast about pretty much everything. I talk about lifestyle. I talk about relationships. I talk about stuff that's going on in media. Here's the thing about the media part. I feel so disconnected sometimes, you guys. Like, because I'm always flying, because I'm either flying, sleeping, exploring, I hop on Facebook and I don't know what the hell y'all talking about. Like I hop on there and say, what are these people mad about today? I don't like, I don't know what's happening at all, but I have seen like a few things. Number one, I'm still watching Pose. Pose is everything this season. I love it. I cannot wait for it to return. I believe Tuesday, it returns Tuesday, which I don't know when the show is going up. So it probably have, has already come on by the time this show is up but love season two. I love the glow up. I love that they're taking each character and they're kind of putting a spotlight on them and just kind of letting you get to know more about it by developing them. And love it, love it, love it, love it. Pose is a phenomenal show and it's been renewed for a third season. I've seen that Disney's been doing the most with all their live action stuff. I'm super hype about Haley, Bailey. That, it's so hard for me to say. I'm sorry, it's not Haley, it's Hallie. See? I always want to say Haley Bailey. It's Hallie Bailey. I'm excited about her being Ariel and Little Mermaid. I think that is, it just makes sense. It's literally perfection. When I saw it, I was like, people are going to be upset, but this is perfection. And that's it. I can't wait to see it. And it's hilarious because I was a late bloomer when it came to Disney films. There's a lot of Disney films I still haven't seen, by the way, like cartoon versions. I've never seen the cartoon of Aladdin, but I did see the live action uh, when it came out and I enjoyed it. Um, I, did, I never saw the Beauty and the Beast. I never saw, well, I saw Little Mermaid in 2011. Um, the guy I was dating at the time pretty much withheld dick until I watched it. So I had to figure out how to be part of the world. So that happened, but I ended up enjoying it. It was like, okay, this is cool. But as a kid, I was into music. Like I was, I was watching music. I was watching Janet Jackson and Michael Jackson and BBD and Michelle. And I was that as a kid, all I wanted was music. So my parents bought me video compilations and cassettes and CDs. And that's what I was obsessed with. I would just watch Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson all day, like just in front of the screen. And I would occasionally watch a Disney film, but it didn't, I wasn't into it like other kids. Love The Lion King though. The Lion King was my shit. I don't think anyone could avoid The Lion King. It just it just wasn't happening. I also love the Goofy movie. That was my shit too. But, but also, cause Tevin Campbell laid down them vocals. So I wasn't really much a Disney kid. So it wasn't until my adult life that I started watching the, these films, but I'm also not as um, emotionally attached to them as other people. Disney has an amazing effect on humanity in general. I've just noticed. I mean, kids love it, but you also see adults who also are just really, really connected to it. And I'm sure there's some kind of um, psychological thing going on there, but that is not my job to even analyze, but there's a lot of adults who are like emotionally attached to Disney characters and it's very interesting. And you can see it because even when they announced Ariel, the casting of Halle Bailey, there were black people who were like, nah, she needs to be white. And I was just like, wow, it's a cartoon though. Like the cartoon's not really, it's a cartoon. It's not really a race. They just happen to make her that color. And the fact that people said that Ursula was black, I'm like, no, Ursula was purple. Like this is a, it's a whole ass cartoon and whatever. But just the emotional attachment, people are like, I want the same movie I had as a kid. But here's the thing, no shade to the people in my generation and the older people. These live action films ain't for y'all though. They're not, 
Disney is never catering to adults. They're always catering to children. So that's cute that you feel that this is for you. It's not. It's for your children. It's for your nieces. It's for your God babies. It's not for you, though. It's not. So I get that you're upset, but the whole purpose of wanting the film the way you know it is basically watching that film. I'm sure you got it on VHS. You know, I hear it's offered in 4K on iTunes. Download the originals, watch it, enjoy that shit. But you have no bearing on the live action. Get over it, boo. It ain't for you. And guess what? It's still going to be number one because it's Disney. It's legit Disney. Like, let it go, sis. Let it go. And it does bother me. It bothers me a little bit that there are Black people who are against a Black casting of Ariel just because of their own shit. And then another thing about films that came out in that time period where, you know, subtle racism was just, you know, the name of the game, everything was white. You know what I mean? Everything was white. You didn't get black characters anyway. So you're saying, I want the old way where everything was white. Like, nah, that's what that's, 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 that's make Disney great again. What the fuck is that shit you talking about? Like, stop it. Stop it. Fucking Hallie is amazing for this role. She just, she has the look. She has the voice. Oh, I can't wait. I'm actually excited to see it. I'm excited to see Mulan too. The Mulan trailer dropped. I did see Mulan because we watched it. I was in middle school when Mulan came out. So definitely excited to see that. I, it looks like it's gonna be super, super dope. I wanna know who the hell is gonna sing Reflections because listen, that's a bop and I don't have time for people to be messing up Miss Aguilera's track. I don't have time for it at all. Like at all but that's pretty much all i've been like connecting to like music has been whatever i've been i'm nothing's really i'm in that weird space that my aunties and uncles were in growing up where they just listened to a certain music from a time period like they were stuck in the 70s and the 80s and they didn't really mess with you know the current music that's where i am either i'm listening to ratchet ass hip-hop of current day while i'm working out or I'm just playing music from my heyday. I'm playing music from high school. So anywhere from 19, I wasn't in high school in 1989, but this is like my vantage point of music. I play music from anywhere from 1980s all the way through like 2000 and maybe eight. That was like, that's like where music was just popping, popping, and I'll occasionally fill in the blanks with some shit that's current, but I found my yesterday. I was listening to fucking Eve's first album. Remember Eve's first album? Let's talk about broke ass niggas, man. Eve, man. She doesn't come to the conversation enough, by the way. Y'all don't mention Eve enough, but Eve was that bitch too. She really was. And listening to Missy Elliott and listening to fucking Sierra's first two albums, you know, stuff from a certain time period. And I think what happens is we all have our heyday. And we want to listen to music from that heyday. That's really what it is. I think that's what it is. Although I feel like now with this job, I'm creating new memories and I'm attaching new music to my travels. Like right now, Megan Thee Stallion is it. I love Megan Thee Stallion. And I also love listening to Megan Thee Stallion while I'm walking the streets of fucking Brooklyn. I just feel like that nigga when I walk through Brooklyn <laughs> listening to Megan Thee Stallion, like, nigga, we ain't gotta talk. Okay, let me stop. But um, yeah, um, I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. So now for that moment of positivity, because it's been a while, but for that piece of encouragement, one thing the last three months or longer has taught me or has confirmed in me, because you guys were there when I was going through the process, is that you can have whatever it is you want. You can. Whatever it is you want, you can have. It's yours, but you have to believe in it. I asked for this position. I asked for this job with this company and I wanted this exact life. In fact, this is better than what I even asked for because it's just it's it's a it's a great time, you guys. And I, I am really, really enjoying myself and I just can't believe it's my life sometimes. And just even 
even the way my schedule has been working out, you know, that's been beautiful. And I manifested this. I meditated daily saying what it was I wanted, where I wanted to be, how much I wanted to make. And I got exactly that and more. And you can do the same thing with whatever your dream is, whatever your goals are, whatever it is that you want, you can do it. But you have to make it plain, write it down, an actual pen to paper. Make that shit real. Put it somewhere where you'll see it every day. Meditate on that every morning. Make it, think about it so much to the point that it's no longer, it's not, it's, it's just a part of you. And you will draw that energy to you. I mean that. You can do whatever it is you want. You can have whatever it is you want. You are worth it. You are worthy. This is your life to live. And you can do whatever it is you want. Please let me be an example of that. I am literally living my best life. Literally living my absolute best life. And it's just crazy to be 33 and to feel so vibrant again, because a part of me was having a good time, but a part of me was settling, kind of like, okay, this is kind of what it's gonna be, you know, for the next 15, 20 years, you know, I'm just gonna be, you know, a homebody and just chill and do my yoga and shit like that. But now I'm going out again and I'm seeing the world and I'm having a good time. And I just feel like it's like being in college all over again. It's like, I got a, a new, breath in me and you can live the same way if that's what you want but make the shit clear and go get what it is that you want you have more power than you can imagine and no one can take that from you you already have it you already are fully equipped with what you need to get to where you need to be and I'm an example of that I'm so pleased with where I am in life. And it feels so good because I remember sitting in my apartment in Georgia, complacent and not happy with where I was and saying, no, this has to change. And I set the intentions and I literally wrote it down. And it, it didn't happen overnight. It did not happen overnight, but it happened. And now I'm sitting right here thinking about sitting in those four walls, wanting to be here. And here I am. That's that's just it's amazing. I could almost cry. I'm not going to, but I could because we have more power than we could ever imagine. But we have to utilize it and believe in it. Thank you guys so much. For listening to the show. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share with your friends. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And yeah, I'm back. Don't know how regular it will be, but I'm back. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out.